Hello, beautiful people. We're back. Yes. With the Dixie. She's the boss today. Yeah, you probably can't see her. I have this pretty tight on our faces oh, right never now. Never mind, there's a dog down <laughs> there. There is a dog down here. She's our supervisor. Um, but today, we get to do something kind of fun. We are going to do an install video for you guys. So the people over at Oxbeam were nice enough to send us a solid state eight gang switch panel and then a set of pod lights. I actually think we have a couple sets of pod lights, but we're Some putting lights. one set on my machine. Um, so we are going to do the install for these products today. And with that, we also have a couple other lights we're putting on. We're putting on some pod lights, uh, or sorry, rock lights, and a reverse light. So I don't know if we're gonna try and do it, but we might try and actually hook the reverse light up to the reverse gear. Because if you own one of these bad boys, you know that if you were backing up, no one knows you're backing up except for you because there are no lights that come on. <laughs> it's pretty funny after yeah. all these years of people <laughs> building side-by-sides, they don't have reverse lights. Yeah. I just, it's a very simple thing. Yeah. Like my machine has the reverse camera. So when you put it in reverse, it turns the camera on automatically. Yeah. So I'm assuming there's a couple switches that come out of the transmission. I don't know if any of them are gonna have 12 volts coming out. So I'm gonna run a test light and see if I can find power to it. And if I can, I can trigger a relay and run the relay to run those lights. So we're gonna see if we can do it. Yep. Everything I've seen on Facebook and stuff says you have to buy a micro switch, pull your console apart, put a mechanical switch in that hits the shifter lever. I just think there might be a way to do it off the transmission switches that are already there. I'm don't know, we're gonna try, so. We're, we're gonna learn. We'll let you know at the end and if I was unsuccessful guys. or not. Yeah. <laughs> Mel's the apprentice today, she's yep. gonna learn how to do electrical. Yeah, in all my years of having an off-road vehicle, I personally, myself, have never hooked up lights. Um, I usually have other people do it for me. So I'm learning just as much as you guys are because to me, electronics is just, I don't know, it doesn't make any sense. It's in one ear or the other, so. And we need more women doing stuff like this. Yeah. So this is good. I hope it gives yeah. other women watching at home with your husbands or if you're on your own doing yeah. this stuff, you can do it too. Yeah. It's not hard. You just have to learn it. It's pretty good. Yeah. So um, I think we're gonna go over and see where we wanna put everything first sit in the car, see where we want to put the pod, um, kind of discuss where we want to put the lights and go from there. Sounds good. Stay tuned. Okay, so we're going to try this again. I'm not sure if you saw the mess of me trying to unbox this on the hood. Didn't go very well. Um, but yeah, so we got the LED pods. Do some unboxing for you guys here. They tell you you're important. It's so nice of them. And then we give you some stickers. You got your harness here, and then underneath that, you got some hardware, and you got the pod lights. So these are, what's this pattern? Is it a floodlight? Uh, I gotta look at the, no, it's So on the spot. side here, like a spotlight. yeah, on the side here, it says white light, which is your spotlights here, um, amber, which is this top bar, and then white and amber, which is both of them. So, these guys, I think we've decided we're gonna put, we're gonna move this camera mount here. We're gonna put them right here. And then what else we got in here? We got our rock lights from Bright Source. And then we also, those are obviously going to go Jesus, this into here. camera takes a while to focus. You're going so quick. Oh, sorry, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got the six inch floodlight here with these are amber flashing on the side. So I think this one will work really good as a reverse light. Uh, the flashing you can use in dusty situations so people can see you. Um, but we're gonna try and hook this up to the reverse gear as we mentioned. So this guy I think I'm either gonna put back up in there or down here. We still got some some deciding to do on this one. So those are, it's RGB too, so you can choose any color you want. They give you more stickers That's and then- the, For the background of the buttons, yep. the colors. Yeah, so these little stickers go, go on, on here buttons. and then these change colors. So this is your pod itself. Um, I think this, I was sitting in the machine earlier and when I'm strapped in, I can't reach anything. Maybe I can just go sit in it. I can barely reach a steering wheel. Show, so. the, show the people. <laughs> Dixie, so. what are you doing over there? Hey? 
I've got to find somewhere to put this bad boy. So some people put them up here, but when I'm strapped in, I'm tight to the seat I don't think here, you can right? reach it. No, I can't. Like, I can barely reach it. I think the only place that I could reach this is right here. And it looks like it will fit perfectly. So I That's think- That's where mine is. Yeah. I think this is a good spot for it. Um, and then what else is in there? What's that other thing? That is that your, like, is this a fuse box? Yeah, that's the main like power board where you hook everything into. It's got your fuses, it's your okay. solid state. Oh, how do you open this bad boy up? It's childproof. <laughs> it's for adults only. <laughs> hard to do without it being there you actually go. screwed to the okay the panel to be able to pull on it oh yeah so you hook all your little wires in here and it tells you positive negative and each one is a different amperage if you know nothing about electronics uh, a lesser amperage would be a smaller item so like one rock light versus a big light bar on your roof you'd want more amperage so 20 oh, okay. or 30 or heated seats they draw a lot of power so we can put those in here as well so you pick um, the load that you're gonna put depends on where you're gonna put it on here and then you match each corresponding hookup to your buttons you got eight buttons and you got eight hookups and then the nice thing about this is it's all gel and it's waterproof sealed where a lot of the other ones I've seen on the market, they'd stack relays here. So you'd hear the relays click. This is called a solid state. So there's no oh. relays to change. There's fuses. Okay. So if you have one of your wires rubs on your frame and would go to like a dead short, like touching the two posts on your battery, the fuse would go to save your machine from burning to the ground but you don't have to worry about relays sticking or relays failing or clicking or chattering because it's solid state. So it's just a computer board underneath. So you still have the fuse, but no relays on this, which is why I chose this one. It's a lot nicer than the old, old school stuff that has relays. So you're just gonna take your main power and your main ground to your battery. And then all your little wires are going out to each um, circuit. So rock light seat, light bar, what have you, whatever you're wiring up. And then this guy, these buttons are gonna plug in right here. So it's a super clean install. Cool. Um, it's all gonna make sense once we yeah. start doing it. So then we have to find a home for that as well. We have to mount that, yeah. Okay. Um, I like to mount that as close to the battery as possible, but still be able to access the fuses if you have an issue on the trail. Cause I don't like running big, heavy power cables all through the chassis where you could have more failures for rubbing. There is still this main circuit breaker. So this isn't a fuse, this is a circuit breaker. This will be on the power wire. So if it does rub like under your seat on the frame or something, this will trip, but you can reset this where a fuse, when it blows, it blows. Mm. So this trips, you lose power to all of your circuits. Yep. Pull over, find the power cable that's rubbed through and you have to fix it. So okay. the grounds, they don't matter if they rub through because they're going to ground. Yeah. The chassis is ground. It's the powers that you don't want to rub through. Okay. And then what's what's that? They give you extra fuses? Yeah, so oh, when you're on the trail, nice if you blow one. Yep. So, um, not to poke fun at our buddy, but a good example of what happened was when we were in West Virginia, Jeff had this in his unit and he had his air pumper hooked up, but he didn't see the numbers on the side for the different loads. Uh, and he had his air pumper, which is a mechanical fan. It, it draws a bit of juice. It's not crazy, but it draws enough. He had it on the five amp circuit, which is only good for say like a rock light. Mm. And within two minutes of going down the trail, his pumper quit and he was talking to me on the comms like, oh, my pumper is dead. We might have to call rugged and warranty. I'm like, where is it wired? It was wired to this. Right away, we opened it up, the five amp fuse was gone, so we just swapped to a 20 or 30 amp circuit. He was good to go. So cool. you have to read the numbers and know how big your load is for what fuse you're gonna run it on. Gotcha. I'm pretty sure, I'm not positive, I haven't done enough playing with these yet because I've only done mine. I think even though it says five amp, you can just swap the fuse out for a 30 amp and run oh. this as a 30 amp circuit because there's more items on these things that require bigger loads than smaller. Really the only small loads would be like your rock lights. Yeah. A light bar, a heated seat, an air pumper, all those things will draw more than five amps. So I think you can ignore the sticker and put a bigger fuse in here, but I don't know 100%. The other neat thing that people don't realize until they play with them, is there's little LED lights right beside the fuses. Oh. Those light up when they're, I think it's 
Is it when like there's a test a, light? It's either lights up when the fuse blows or it lights up when it's working and then goes out when the fuse, it's one or the other. Well, so you can, can just look out. at it quick yeah. and know that it's either working or not. Cool. And yeah, Sweet. spare fuses. Yeah. yeah. So that's what's in all the boxes. Um, where are these? Mounting brackets, Mounting brackets, wiring harness to hook yep. it all up, harness for this. Yep. Um, oh, a condom. You put a little, <laughs> oh, on top little of that, water yeah. guard condom on her. So when and you pressure wash it and just a bunch of zip ties to, is that your harness? to wire it up, that? that's for this and it goes into oh, that. Oh, that's sweet looking. So the cool thing is like a lot of people would just put a bunch of switches on their dash back in the day. Mm -hmm. But now, and then you'd have all kinds of wires inside the dash. Now you just have this one wire that's hooked together mm -hmm. and it's only four wires and then it's all solid state in here. So your wires only go to this, which is can be hidden behind the seat or something. Yeah. Keeps everything in the dash really simple. Cool. Yeah, but it's well packaged, it's yeah. well put together. A lot of people run the Oxbeam 8 gang. There's a lot of manufacturers, but it's a good unit. And a yeah. lot of people, you see it in their car. Cool. All right, well, let's get to it. All right, so we got the right zip tied in. At the front, we put that on this little cross beam up here. And then on the back, same idea, a little cross beam up there. What are you doing? The battery's under here. Oh. So I'm taking the seat out. They're kind of a pain to get the seats out of these things. The bolts go down into the frame and they're pretty hard to get your hands in there. Yeah, but... it's a good thing I have little hands. <laughs> yeah, they fit in the tight spots. It's a shame that more women don't wrench because we can fit in spots that you guys generally can't. Yeah. yeah. Show us how it's done, babe. You need the, you need the muscles. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you look comfortable in there, babe. Yeah. Just twisting that screw. Yeah. Get it, get it. It's a little dirty in here. I haven't really cleaned it since West Virginia, so. Yeah, look at this. You filthy, I had to, filthy <laughs> animal. I had to fight between, through all the mud in this back cup holder to Thank get this know. one little screw out. I might have screwed the head up a little bit. But I think that's it. You stripped her. Oh, no, we need one more up here. And then I think we're good. What are you doing right now so the people know? Okay, so now we're taking out the center console so we can, we're gonna put the fuse box right here behind the passenger seat. And we're gonna run the wires up and through here to where the switch pod is gonna be. So that's Makes what I'm sense. doing. So it's a little, a little bit involved. So you have to pull the seats out to get it all the little plastic yep. clippy things. Yeah. A few screws, some pop rivets, and you're good to go. Yeah, I think we got the rock lights mounted. I got this backup light mounted back here. So I got this little battery and these little jumper wires. Get on there. Just to kind of test things, figure out what wires for what color does what, because there's multiple functions on these. So we're getting there. The last thing we need to install is these pod lights. We're gonna put them right above the mirrors here. But Steve has to do some fabbing first. Yeah, so I got these generic tabs to keep them in stock. They're just laser cut. You can use them to like mount your roll cage, mount whatever. But because I want the light to sit here like a so, and then there'll just be a bolt going through that mount. Normally you'd mount the tab this way so the flat works. But because I'm gonna mount the tab this way, I need to arch this. So I'm gonna put this in my tube notcher. It's a TMR Customs Grizzly, super slick tool. Love it a lot. Maybe Mel could grab some footage and I'll show you how I put a curve in this thing and it fits like butter after. Perfect. Okay, so we got this little tab clamped in this Grizzly Notcher. It's a Canadian company, Canadian made product. Works really freaking good. Uh, use it for roll cage, notching tubing and everything, but it works for flat bar, it works for square stock, works for everything. So I'm just gonna cut this out quick. The dog's probably gonna run away. Oh yeah. Yeah, boy. We got her. See? Perfect yeah. curve. Very nice. Perfect curve. Very nice. Oh yeah, look at that. See? That's perfect fit compared to if it was just flat like that. Yeah. You'd have big gaps for your weld. Now, she's tight. Oh boy. 
And then this baby will go in that bowl hole. We're laughing. It's uh -huh. meant to be. Now it's taking the paint off. So we can do some welding. A little bit of sanding action. And then we get the little tabs on. Yep, don't look at that weld. Half of it's paint. <laughs> Hurts my eyes, looks like shit. My prep work wasn't very good, so uh, keep doing more prep work. My apprentice was learning how to sand pipe. Yeah. <laughs> I had to show her. Need more sanding. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's still welded, just don't look at it. Once we cover it with paint and the light's on there, no one's gonna see it. It's not structural, it's just to hold a freaking little light bulb. It don't matter, but I'm gonna make this side go easier. <laughs> If you're taking. All right, so we got the ox beam pods up there. This is what it looks like from back here. They're a little big. Not, Not sure, sure about if we the like them. Placement, but see how she goes. We're gonna put a test to it with a battery now. Make sure they work. Woo! Ah! I'd say it works. It's blinding. Jesus. Where's the button? Off. <laughs> On. Oh, so that's the amber. Oh, so they just glow, they don't strobe. No. So that's the white, and you're supposed to be able to do the amber and white at the same time. Yeah, you can't even really see the amber. No. That's the amber on its own. <laughs> My eyes hurt now. Yeah, they're bright. <laughs> and it looks like, so they're flood out the front, but then from the side, I think there's a light that comes out here as well. Yeah, it's like a side shooter. Yeah, so that'll be really good, good for like night riding. Be able yeah. to see everything in the trees. Mm -hmm. Plus this light. Yeah, plus is this one. Spot. Yeah. Light. Be able to see everything at night. Everything? Everything. While we sit around the campfire and don't even go out at night? Yeah. <laughs> to the bag. All right. Okay, so this is what I've gathered so far. You get three cables to hook this unit up to the battery. You've got this long red one. You've got this black one, which I'm gonna have to pull out of here. This long black one, as you can see. And then you've got this short red one. So in order to get this unit powered up, what you gotta do is you have to run this red one to this relay and then with that relay, you wire it to the battery. And we had a hard time kind of finding somewhere where all of that would fit together, where we could also run this ground directly to the battery. Um, so I think we figured it out. We put it right on top of the air filter cover here. And as you can see, that will fit there. And then that will fit there, no problem. And then, I don't know if we tested this, so let's see, the ground's over here, or? So that's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so, ground. That's too and short, that's too so, short. so we're gonna run it. We're gonna run back. it back in here, and in behind here, there so is a the grounding strap. There's a chassis ground back here, where there's a whole bunch of grounds. Yeah. Right there, we're gonna tie it into the chassis. So, that is what we problem solved. Yep, so well, that's where we are. Yeah. So Mel's just hooking up that main power cable. So just make sure when you guys mount this um, relay box that you have it on the edge of the uh, box plate back here so that you can get the wires through the bottom. There's that, the hole in the bottom to route everything. Yeah, we kind of did an oopsie here. Yeah, we had, it, we had it too high and then we lowered it down. Yeah. So just make sure you have that low enough that you can hide all the wires to make it look as clean as possible. So obviously red to, there's a little red tab here to tell you to go to red. <laughs> it's color coordinated. <laughs> in, in case you needed a bit more instruction. Um, and then black to this guy here. 
Or you can read the instructions. Or we are doing this on a whim. We haven't read anything in... I know what I'm doing, though. Yeah. <laughs> this isn't the first install. In, uh... It's a different location, but same unit. Yeah, to be completely transparent with you guys, though. And it's also Sunday afternoon, so... It's been a long weekend. Yeah. Two things we want to talk about with you guys. First thing. Uh, whenever we're doing electrical on these off-road vehicles, I was just explaining to Mel, uh, this is called dielectric grease. So before we hook this connector into the main block there, I always just put a big gob of that on anything that you're connecting just to help keep moisture out so it doesn't go green and corrode. So then you start having issues down the road where it's not working when it should be. And then you got to chase things. So it's, it's just a nice thing to do. If you go any parts store, pick up some dielectric grease. Um, second thing, Mel said she wants this off her key, so she doesn't. she's forgot her seats on many times because they're directly to the battery, <laughs> and she just, just shuts it off and walks away, and then I see the buttons on. So we're gonna tie it to the key. So right beside where we mounted it is your factory, it's your factory ECU, and then you've got your electric power steering, main fuse uh, for the steering, and then main fuse for the whole car. A Couple spare fuses up inside, and then this is the factory fuse block. So there's all different spots here. There's 20 amp spare, there's a 10 amp spare, there's ETV, there's your fuel, four wheel drive, headlamps, accessories, fan. So we're gonna try the uh, accessory fuse and see if that's, I'm gonna probe it and check it, which I'll probably just show you guys that and then make sure that it's gonna work. And the kit comes with these two, um, I don't even know what the name is for these things, but basically the way it works is you plug this in to that fuse in the fuse block. When you pull the fuse out, it goes in this bottom port, so you still have the original circuit, but then you have a second circuit on top of it that's just a five amp fuse to trigger this new system. So it's, it's just a trigger on off with the key. There's no loads on it. It's not doing anything but allowing this unit to power up. All of the power is gonna come through these big cables, so it's just a trigger line. It's very small, but We'll open that up. I'll make sure with a test light that we get the power with the key that we want. And then make sure which one of these fit because there's a there's a micro and a small one. So I don't know what which the, the cow has. Yeah. Cool. I just gave Mel a test light. I figured might as well teach her rather than me doing it for her. And you guys can watch her learn and do it and sit at your TV and yell, no, poke it here and do it like that. So anyway. I'm just going to blow the whole car up. She's going to blow the whole car up. <laughs> so. This clamp here, Mel, is going to go on the negative on the battery. This down guy? There. Yeah, clamp it right on the battery, or it could be clamped on a chassis or anywhere. It's just, you need Ooh, to have a good ground. You need to have good strength. Like there? That's fine, yeah. Okay. Now, take the other end to make sure that that ground worked and probe it on the positive. Lift the cover up and stick it on there, and then it will read out with a oh. color. Oh. It's going to show you 12.6 12 12 volts. Okay, so that's a fully charged battery, 12.6 volts. So cool. you have a good ground, and okay. the test light is working. Okay. okay. Now, you need your cover here. Yep. And we wanted to try this one, Fuse Accessory 20 Amp, which is the, the yellow one in there. Yep. So stick it on, if I grab this fuse and show you, See the little silver things on mm -hmm. either side? You need to touch the tip of that screwdriver on the silver things and see if it lights up. Oh. So you can't use that fuse because no. see how it lit up? Yeah. Your key's off right now. So that oh. means that that circuit is always live all the time. So, so we need we to pick need, another one. It says, what about, does it need to be 20 amp? It doesn't matter. We're drawing nothing. Okay, so fuse spare. Try that one. Nothing? Are you on the metal thing? Get your eyes right up. I think so. It looks like you're touching the plastic. No, I think I'm on the metal okay, thing. Okay, check the other side of it. Okay, nothing? I don't think so. Okay, I'm going to turn the key on, see if it gives you power. No. No. Okay, that one won't work either. Okay. What's another one? Um, this one? What's it for? Oh, well, it <laughs> lit up anyway. Okay, so that uh, one won't work. That one won't work. Uh, accessory socket? That one didn't light up. Okay, let me turn the key on. Yep. And then key off. Yeah, off. and then key back on. Check the other side, just so you, just so you understand that both yep. sides are on and off. Yeah. Yep. We're gonna use that one. Okay, so we're going to use, if you have a Kawasaki and you wanna do the same thing, we are going to use fuse accessory socket. How oh, the hell? I don't know if this actually works at all. <laughs> 
You or just, I'm just new. You haven't learned the operation instructions for it yet. No. Here, try <laughs> some pliers. Metal might work better. Just pull straight out. Ha -ha! It's like I pulled a tooth. There you go. All right. So now see if that will fit in there. This but guy? Put the fuse in first in that. Put that 10 amp you just pulled. In, in the here? In the empty socket, yeah. Jeepers. I got pretty strong hands. That's tight. Yeah. That's good. That's far enough. Oh, okay. There okay. you go. Does it need to be fully submerged? Well, I might need to pull it out, right? No, it'll stay in there. If that'll fit, though. Oh, it might not fit because it's going to hit everything. That's why I Man. wanted to check. Okay. Back to the drawing board. Back to the drawing board. Man. So. You that gotta, you that gotta fuse do didn't hickey. work. <laughs> so we're going to test different fuses again. Why didn't um, it work? What was the problem? It didn't work because, where are we? This guy, we need to plug this in here. And it hits. And it hits. Uh, this wire hits these fuses here. So we have to, in order to make this work on this fuse block, we got to use one of these outside doohickeys. We need more clearance, We need more clearance. clearance. So uh, what do we got on the outside here? Try lamp. We get not fuel, fuse lamp. So fuse lamp is the second one down. It's off. All right, so it's off with the key off. And then it goes, oh, look at that. It goes on with the key on. Yep, should, because your headlights. Yep. Lamps. Oh, oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. We'll use that one. Okay, we're going to use that one. So this one will work. Test fit it in here. Oh, it's so nice. Perfect. Oh, okay. That makes more sense. That you makes, understand that? more gooder. So now. And that we might have to trim or something. I think to get we're going to need to put a hole in this. Yeah, yeah. We'll to get the wire to come through. We got the two wires connected with a butt connector here. And then Steve put a, like, drilled a hole in here and put a silicone cap in there to run the wires through to kind of keep the integrity of the fuse box. And we're just going to do this. Shove it all in there. Make it fit. Make it fit. Done. Okay, so I told Mel that next thing we have to do is make sure since we closed all this back up and it's all wired in is to check the other end so that it is a good connection. Make so sure that it's doing what it's supposed to do before yes. you wire it all up and you're like, why isn't my shit working? That's and then right. you have to take it all back apart. That's right. So, so we're going to we're going to do a insurance plan here. She's got so. her test light. Turn the key on. So you probably have it in the wrong hole. There's two oh, holes on oh. that. Oh. Uh-oh. Oh, no. I think, what happened? Is the metal actually touching the metal inside? Is it going deep enough? Because it might not be. It's in, it's in there pretty good. Oh, there, there we go. You did <laughs> have it in the right hole, but you didn't have it deep enough. Oh. I, I'm not used to putting things in holes. Oh. So it, it works. works. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell, but it's dark outside now. Um, and it, it's not that late, but it, yeah, it's so dark. this probably Mel's we're filming and doing this at the same time, and he's teaching me. So we are probably like five hours in at this point. Um, She's two bottles of wine. So in, just kidding. <laughs> I'm drinking water right now. I might need a beer in a second. Um, but just so you know, if you want to do this nice, it will not be a quick job. Yeah, it takes a long time. Yeah, so. Be to prepared. do it tidy and do it nice yeah. takes long. But hopefully you watch us struggle, or specifically me, you watch me struggle, get a little bit of entertainment out of it, and some excellent. information. You're yeah. doing excellent. So now you got to put your lube yes. on your hole. So now you lube up the hole that we just poked that I didn't go deep enough in. So I'm just going to put a little glop on there. And go up through the bottom, remember? Oh, yep, 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 yep thank yep, you, yep, appreciate yep, you. Yep, in there. Oh, that's tight fit. <laughs> How do I zoom this thing in there and get a... I might have to re-lube this. You got it all over your fingers. Yep. Just smush it in there. It's good. Perfect. There you go. Perfect. And then you take this and you go, boop. And that's that. Ta-da. And then we'll zip tie that wire yeah. up. Nicely. We could have even shortened that if we wanted to, but we can, we can, we'll make it work. And just hide it in the yeah. block there. Perfect. So now we're done this. On um, to the next part. What's the next part? Um, the power and ground cables. Okay. So now, so now that this is all hooked up, we got to hook this to this and then this to the battery. 
I like how everything's called this. Yeah. This to this and this. <laughs> we have to hook the power cable to the relay. There you go. Yes. yes. And then we got to hook the relay to the battery. Yes. But we don't even need to do that right now, do we? We can always do that no, after. No, we don't. Ha we don't have to. Okay. It's but that would be your next step. Oh, you power cable to relay, to be, yes. relay to battery, and then you got power, and then you power everything. And the other thing you could do is we've already got the switch thing mounted, and all the wires are just hanging out back there, so yeah. you could goob it up and put it in the bottom and plug it in, and this other, this one. Is oh, for the that's switches. where this one goes. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, so this, which we're running through our tunnel here, is going to come in. I think we'll probably, you like... You can do that right now, because yeah. it's ready to go, oh. and then we'll just zip tie it up, clean okay. it up. We'll lube her up. Actually, I'm going to... I learned my lesson. I'm going to put this in first. Get in your home. There. When put you talk to it, it, it goes better, yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah. You have to talk to inanimate objects. And then you go... Bloop. Perfect. And then you go... Flip her on. And then you do. Now lick your finger. That. No. All right, so we got this all cleaned up. We got the ignition switch cable in there. We got the ground in there. It's going to the chassis over here. And everything is zip tied in. We put the relay right here. The only thing we haven't done is actually hook it up to the battery yet. But we did do a test to make sure that this is all working right. Um, Checked switch one. Actually, we could film that. Yeah, hold this back on here. Turn key on. Oh, look at the colors. See, so that's working now. It's hooked up. Ta-da! So yeah, now we have the long process of pulling all the cables for the lights. Now we gotta wire every light. Yeah. Are we putting the seats on too or leaving them up here? Uh, we could put the seats on so I don't leave them on forever. <laughs> <laughs> We got to cut those harnesses apart and rewire them too. Yeah. So we got quite a few hours of work ahead of us. We will not film at all. Yeah. But once we get to the part of putting the lights in here, we will show you guys. All right. So we've got the first wires run here. These are for the seat heaters and the PRP seats. And as you can see, I have a yellow and a black in there. And how this works is underneath here. It shows you the positive and the ground for each fuse. So I have it wired into a 20 amp fuse. It needs a minimum of a 15 amp fuse. And the yellow goes to your positive and the black goes to ground. It is very easy. That's all dirty. <laughs> I'm not surprised. I don't know why I wear white oh, in the shop. That's West Virginia dirt. But I ruin everything. Can't take you anywhere. I can't have anything nice except for this. This thing's cool. Yeah. So um, as a complete noob, I found this quite easy. The whole concept of um, one wire going to the battery makes a lot of sense to me, and one wire going to a switch. I think it's a much neater and tidier way to do it than having like seven or eight individual pods all over the place and having wires running to and from. Mm -hmm. I think it's, uh, I think it makes a lot of sense. I Good. like it. You learned some electrical. Yeah, I learned the basics. And hopefully it doesn't burn down. It won't burn down. It won't burn down. That's not a thing. Yeah, I really like it. We're gonna do a, I really like the, the pod and that whole setup, that whole thing is great. So go check them out, Oxbeam. Um, we are going to do a video comparing the pod lights. Steve has, I think it's Strands is the brand from Bright Source. And then we have these Oxbeam pod lights. They're not exactly the same. Like these ones have more lights in them than yours do. 
But we can get that style from that company. That's we what can. Andrew's running on yeah. his Can-Am. So we, we can compare even... that to his Can-Am that's yeah. sitting in the oh, house. Oh yeah, we have the Can-Am here, so we could do that. We'll compare that to an the ones on Andrew's. Um, but yeah, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Hit the bell, subscribe, and we will see you next time.